Hello everyone and welcome to this classic Rugby World Cup 2015 game. It's Wales versus England, delivered to you by our friends at DHL. Now, last week we had a classic England v Wales game from 2003 Rugby World Cup. Um, somehow England managed to scrape to a narrow victory. This week, Wales play England in their backyard, um, I might say. Wales is only a population of 3.3 million. Um, nothing compared to what England have. Uh, you know, surely this is going to be an England victory. The 3.3 million thing, it's like, yeah, fine, there aren't that many people in Wales, but there is also nothing else to do. I don't want to generalise, um, uh, except farm and play rugby. So you're right, England, England should, by rights, because they're English, win sort of 99 out of every 98 games between these two countries. But it doesn't always work out that way, does it, Tommy? Cycling. We're pretty good at cycling, mate, as well. All right. What? We've got one. We've got one. We got Hoy and Wiggins. You've got one. Anyway, we've got I mean, Darren Thomas, mate. Anyway, 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 anyway here it is. My mum was born in Pontypool, fella. So I was conceived in Pontypool, and my mum was born there. So I'm as I'm more Welsh than you, probably. The thing with Sam Warburton is he looks like what are those? What are those? Um, those dot they those China models they get made in grogs are they called in wales when you get a certain number of caps you get a grog made yeah he actually looks like one for mine oh god they are jamie roberts coming out second as always bit of airtime. time <laughs> <laughs> that's tradition is tradition always right next to the captain. huge game this massive game Do you remember we were there weren't we hey sorry we were there weren't we at the stadium yeah, I remember this game really well. I, I mean, England, England had just uh, beaten Fiji, hadn't they? This was the second game up. Wales pumped Uruguay, so huge game. Um, I was I was actually commentating for a, a different channel. Um, you know, we've all got strengths and weaknesses. There are pros and cons to all channels. I was elsewhere, and basically, this was his show. It was the Sam Burgess show because basically, everything England had done well to this point had been credited to Sam Burgess, and everything that had ever gone wrong had been blamed on Sam Burgess. Um, even though he hadn't done anything incredible, and he hadn't done really anything wrong at all. Here are the anthems, and they should be special. I think England panicked in selection. They were so worried about the big jaw of Jamie Roberts coming down that Ford Farrell channel that they panicked and picked Burgess to deal with him. Because Ford had played at 10, Farrell at 12. Mm. Burgess went all right. He did, he did play well in this game. I mean, from memory, it's one of those things that We've said it, I've said it a thousand times since that World Cup. It, England were fine until Sam Burgess went on. You holding back the tears? Yeah, a little bit. I haven't seen much of Jeff Parley. Have we for a while? There's Shanks. It's his fault, Sam's fault. Can't believe Sam played for England when they asked him to, can you? Shot up the nose there. What's he have for breakfast? <laughs> What's he thinking? What is he thinking? Well, here we go. Brilliant, that doesn't it? Out. Did the did the Welsh bother with their anthem? Oh, they did. Oh, well, good on them. Mate, no one will sing it better than that man. Look at him swallowing in the crowd. Aaron Jarvis played at Bath with him. We were never we were never separated over about eight years by more than one second in a fitness test, which does not say a lot for him. Sampson Lee, quite a small face on a big head, I've always thought. There he is, the governor. Your best mate, your dad. Tallest bloke ever. Ever? Yeah, it's probably the best anthem, isn't it? Mm, 
ranks up there with Islands Call, I think, as well. Flower of Scotland is amazing. Mm. Like we've seen him in a shirt, in a Welsh shirt for a while, have we? Scott Williams. The problem with the, the problem with the Italian anthem is it's a great anthem, but it's always followed by them losing. So it does it lose a bit of impact, doesn't it? Or very often followed by them losing. There he is. Thought he did watch him. That's it, a bit of Rolling Stones. Tom Wood, Rob Shaw, yeah. Burgess, Burgess and, Barrett. and Barrett. Not much going on there apart from direct. Dangerous back three though. Hallam Amos on the left wing, played himself in over Alex Cuthbert. No half penny, no John Davis. Good back row that though. Lydia, Warburton, Faletau. Yes. Yes, that's a hell of a back row. You shouldn't lose many tests with that, I don't care who you're playing. It's a shame that England had such awful food poisoning in the two days building up to this game, isn't it? Cold. Well, they, all the players on this pitch will realise this atmosphere is off the charts. He's in good nick, Warby, wasn't he? Very, very good. Really good nick. Mind you, so was he. Yeah. Looks nervous, not doesn't he, Gats? Actually, not, not in such good nick. <laughs> England versus Wales. Lancaster. Are you nervous? Are you all right? I'm all right. You do sometimes get nervous watching games, though. I do, anyway. I know there's nothing riding on it, but yeah, you still want your your home country to do well. Well, you know they're going to, so I mean you're okay. Um, yeah, this was a mega day, actually. It was a mega, mega day. The atmosphere was brilliant. It was one of the best atmospheres I've seen at Twickenham. That kind of went a little bit downhill towards the end because obviously there are more English there than Welsh. But, but it was a tough call, wasn't drama. it? You got Wales, England, mm. Australia. You know, three doesn't go into two. Yeah. It don't, boy. It very rarely does. That is a cracking first restart from Wilderness Woody, the wild man. Standard. I'd have thought he might go quickly then, because I thought Wales are going to try and play and play and play and try and dominate, you know, dilute England's power. Yeah. They didn't. See what, Tom Young's wasn't long for the England team, was it? as soon as Eddie Jones arrived. Was this Tom Young's last game? Close to it. Mm. He's, he, or, I saw him on uh, Instagram in quarantine, in lockdown. He's just working on a family farm, doing long days on the farm. I think he's happy as Larry, to be honest. Tough bloke. Imagine, Eddie Jones. Yeah, I know. He used to play centre. Imagine facing that. Yeah, a tank coming at you. Yeah. It's like a breeze block, isn't he, with eyes? It's a messy bit of mauling, that. Not a brilliant Courtney Lord. Wow, brilliant job. Absolutely kibosh that. And cheated at the same time. It turns out. Didn't release it. Didn't release. I remember this tournament because Dan Bigger had a really funny kicking style that he's never really, he's oh. never really carried on. Yeah, well, that was less in the shoulders. It was like a TikTok dance. Matt, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was like they called it the Macarena, didn't they, or something? Or was that the the, the bigger Arena? Hackerain. They called it something like that. But he seems to have he seems to have chilled a bit on that front. Mm. I love looking and see what he's doing. I love watching. He's like play. Rafael Nadal before he serves, isn't he? Oh, you seen Rafael Nadal before he Ooh. serves? He's always touching himself. Yeah. Nose. You okay, fella? You okay, fella? Now he steps, doesn't he? Yeah. 
Ooh. Let's kick mine. I just held out, didn't you it? Have a Big start. Did you have a goal kick in the game? I had to do it once in a semi final of the Heineken Cup. We're drawing after extra time. That's the only time we've ever had a place kick. Yeah. Ask me where it went. No, I'm all right. Um, great kick to figure that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toby Falatau is an interesting one because because he's such a physically capable, consistently excellent international number eight. You meet, you think he's going to be an absolute unit, and he isn't. And then you meet him and realise he isn't. And there are still people who've met him who say he's massive. He's massive. He's not massive. He just plays massive not a massive guy just unbelievably powerful talented fit his work rate bradley davis is a huge man. oh it's unbelievable uh, bradley davis there, is that's the matchup we want to see that's it short on numbers here that's nice that from courtney the two sixes there Farrell again, gets it out to one of England's big threats, Johnny Mack. Oh, you always been like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ben Youngs. Farrell looking to go nope. after it. He's also looking for a penalty. Hardly ever works, that. Until it works. Hard. Not the front peel. It's like the chip kick in your own half. Never works till it works. Oh, big kick from Burgess. Oh, cold. Oh, that's not bad. It's not Job bad. Done. Everyone knows that in rugby league you don't Took him a while to find a position. I mean, Bath tried him at six, at 12. No doubt he's a quality player. But you've got to be coming over with some sort of idea of where you're going to play. Or the coaches have to have some sort of idea of where you play. You know, it was England wanted to play him in one position, Bath in another. I feel sorry for the bloke but, in a way because it's not his fault. You know, he just wants to get on the field and play, but there needs to be some consistency, especially when you're trying to learn the game. Yeah, I, I, I always felt pretty clear about where he should have played. I thought he should have played in the back row, um, six or eight. And the thing about, oh, that's nice. The thing about playing six or eight is, you're, you know, without stating the obvious, you are a forward. Now, what does, what does Sam Burgess like doing? He likes smashing ball up and smashing people in the tackle. But a couple of things, you know, that's and effectively you can do that in league because the jobs are simpler and there are fewer of them. Um, so they do it; they often do it to a higher level. But you've got to, you know, you've got to spend two or three hours a week doing boring lineout drills, 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 drills. Super boring. That's in attack. Then defensive lineout formations and triggers, and it is boring. And there's loads of donkey work, and it's just not as exciting as banging and clanging in league. And I thought, well. He's got to be prepared for quite a boring few years, except for match days, because that's what being a pro forward is like. It just is. It's really repetitive. You're learning loads of new skills. And I just thought, well, and also, because he's, he's a big unit in league, he's not very big. He's not especially big in union. Union's a big man's game. So he just mm. wasn't banging people. He couldn't smash people physically like he could in league. And also in league, there's a lot more direct running, really, where you can line people up, but it's a lot more physical in that aspect, whilst rugby is, a, you know, you're, you're quite in the way you attack. I mean, that's not to say, you know, in phase play in league and fourth or fifth tackle, you know, they produce um, different angles and they try and create space. But, you know, the first two or three carries in league is just straight up the guts. Yeah, it's up the guts and there's, there's not that much variation to it. Um, so there's lot, that's why there's a lot of big hits because you often pretty much know what's coming. It's the rugby union's not like that, of course. And also they're just bigger men. There's more rest in union, and there's obviously the set piece. And you need static strength for some of the set piece work. So they're just much bigger men. And he just wasn't as dominant a specimen in union. Still think he could have been really good, but it just would have been a bit dull for him playing six or eight. I think in union compared to what he was doing in league. Oh, oh wow. Sharp. We're training on the same field at the moment in lockdown. Training on the same pitch at the back here. Same sessions. Um, I say training. I say training. I'm playing like rounders with the kids, and he's actually doing sessions. He's got his. Um, say you're doing like sprint hollows. <laughs> do fart leg. I'm just missing the leg. Um, he's doing. Uh, he gets his. He gets his top off pretty quick. 
he's got cool hair and he's got his own speak he's got his own like bluetooth speaker boom he's got the rap coming out he's got the cone set out what i like about it is there's no rush he'll do a 20 minute session but it'll take him an hour and a quarter because of all the warming up the jogging the prep the sitting around the sorting the tunes out the drinking the snacks the gels whatever it is like not cutting any corners i've been in and out of a 20 minute session i'm out in 21 minutes done that's why he's career is going a bit better than mine went probably potentially do you um i mean part of being fast part of being fast mate is looking good though isn't it you know sprinters look good when they train they take their time yeah walk back yeah. recovery strut yeah. my little uh, my little eight-year-old yeah, just we were spotting on in the car and it comes up on the screen and there's that song somebody come get her dancing like a stripper and the bloke who sings it she's like he looks like anthony the rugby player anthony watson but anthony's got much better legs so i said whoa 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 he says no he's got massive muscles and he has he's actually bigger than you think a lot of these guys are bigger than you think actually massive legs and arse he's got a lot of power good story cheers <laughs> Almost made it a bit bigger, but the defence is good. First man. Very good. Typical Three Welsh. penalties by England, first off. <laughs> he got his anchor in there, Jamie, didn't he? He just got his, dug the chin into the ground. And just, duh, 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 duh. Can't get it out then, can you? It's like a tent peg. Yeah. King Arthur's sword. He's got a... Uh, I like Joe's hair when he used to do crazy stuff like that with it. I think it's gone now, though, so he can't really do as much as he used to. Let's have a look at this breakdown now. That's a good tackle by Lydia. Shot don't stop, do it. Shot don't stop. You've got to be so brave to make those chop tackles because you literally, or there's no soak up. You're moving forward. You're trying to put an aggressive shot on. You're going low where it hurts, around the knees, around the shins. Not for everyone, that. No. Nope. Like Joe I'm Worsley sure used just... to be good at it as well. Yeah. He was the original, wasn't he? He was good before anyone else was good. Mm. I just think if I if I tackled like that, I think my shoulders will come out. They will just come out, made of chocolate. They will come out. Oh, that's quite a toughie, that. I suppose it is the right call. If Courtney hadn't gone up, they'd have got away with that. This is what the crowd came to see, fella. I mean, you've got Burgess and Barrett in the centre. You're going direct here, I reckon. You go in 9-12. Or you just scrum oh. it. You see, you see why England get the penalty there, because they, they have moved forward. But actually, I think they've run around. They've run around. Because when, when referees look for scrums, wheeling around and running around they always look for it going the other way um they always look for it whipping effectively with marla going forward watch dan cole he steps to the side here and goes around crabbing mm. that for me is a flat out wales penalty i know i'm english and i love dan cole that is a welsh penalty you can see why getting jenkins is annoyed with that because that's the wrong call by a mile that flats you love scrums. Really. yeah your kids love scrums you know that angle we saw above the top of the scrum do you think yeah. there should be some sort of independent referee who's watching every single scrum like that to decide where the penalty is given quick word in the refs here oh. tmo no no i also no. think that that's the worst angle of all almost for the scrum it's not really? the worst angle but you're better off seeing it from the normal camera camera one job because that doesn't give you everything you need um anywhere near what you need but it's Why fun not? that angle you can, see, you can see it you can see who's you can see who's angling in yeah, you can see oh, is it not all you can see is angles and jerseys, but you can't see yeah. their legs, for example. So if you see Dan Cole start to go in there, really yeah. then that might be because Jeffy Jenkins has swung his hips out and done that. You just can't see everything, and you can't see anything, you know, longitudinal, whatever it is. So he might be folding in, but that might be because Jeffy Jenkins is cheating or whatever. You don't know. So mm. it's I don't I don't love that angle. And as for the extra expert, like who who is that expert? So say I play prop for ages and I commentate now. You might call me an expert. Would I get these decisions right on the spot way more than the refs? 
I reckon it'd be marginal. I honestly reckon it'd be marginal. Right. The refs are very good. But you only got a split second to do it. And why am I, because I played prop for years, why am I suddenly going to become an expert at making decisions in the scrum? I think it's easy for me because I get replays. Um, well, no, I wasn't, I, I wasn't saying you should be it. I was Brian Moore. He's the only scrum expert ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I actually don't, I don't think it's a great idea. Okay, and no, I know that. I've just, it's for the listeners. That was all. You've also got on a, you know, on any given day in a, well, in a rugby world cup that's a lot of extra experts you need out there you know you've got your three refs your fourth official your tmo your scrum expert it's like oh, this is getting a bit punchy now i think educating the current refs continually is continually is that's the way to go but what about that you having that choppy a good option there nothing really on doesn't connect with it he's angry though he's always angry yeah, you've got to blame someone for that. I've never, I've never seen, I've never seen him just walk back after a decision has been given against Wales and accept it. No, but it's like Michael Jordan, isn't it? He probably finds ways to motivate himself. He likes to feel hard done by because it motivates him. You know, he likes to feel put upon. Wow, Dan Jordan, that is a hell, that is a hell of a take. Oh, got to be careful here. How's that not a turnover? That I'll tell you how. He wasn't actually nicking the ball. He was just in the right place. Oh, great take! Very good. See, Mike Brown was one of those players, wasn't he? That everyone was like, shouldn't should be someone else. Drop him, drop him, drop him, drop him. Suddenly, he's got what seventy caps or whatever. In situations like that, you're like, well, he just he just does such a good job. Of not leaving the team exposed, you know. He's Dan Cold Air hands on the floor. He looks the ball. He's not scoring his own weight there, though. No, mm. and he's not actually trying to get the ball. So it's a good referee, and Gethin Jenkins is right. A lot of the Welsh players took an instant dislike to Mike Brown. Uh, just including you, just saved time. It just saved time, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, like all these guys, like you meet Dan Bigger. He's so nice. He's such a nice bloke. And you meet Mike Brown. He's so nice. Quite quiet. Really nice. You get on the field. Love it. Have a shave, mate. You're on telly. The Royal Family. Well, you were. War of words between those two. The anthems were terrific, weren't they? Not just from the... I was about to say, Prince William came into the change room right after one of our Welsh games. Um, and uh, they come a little bit late. They allow the team to to shower and change, really. And I've just got out of the shower and I was just doing a, a little mangina for everyone in the changing room. <laughs> as I come out of the shower, there he is with his entourage in the middle of the changing room. I said, what do you reckon, mate? In or out? <laughs> <laughs> it's devastating. Did he like it? Loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I was at... I haven't um, seen him since. I was at Mike Tindall's 30th, and, um, or Zara's 30th, I don't know which one. And he was there, and he was forcing everyone to do funnels. He was funneling everyone. Good, except I'd come coincidentally from Twickenham, from a test at Twickenham, and I've got a burger on the way out because I hadn't eaten all day. Well, hadn't eaten for an hour. End of the day burger, oh. food poisoning from it. So I was ill oh. at the first, I was sick outside, and then Harry saw me being sick and told told everyone I couldn't handle the funnels. I said, it wasn't the funnels. It was the wild boar burger I had at Twickers. <laughs> anyway, another royal anecdote. That is a good line. He's a little carry that way. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. He could have got that inside of Robshaw. Could have been in then. No, I wouldn't. I'd better have had him covered. But yeah, should have gone in. <coughs> you need you needed to make a couple of metres off that carry, didn't you, if you're England? They're just starting to get pushed back now. So you now got where, to do something. But, yeah. And Wales just need to slow it down just for two or three seconds. He's done well there, Warburton. 
So this is the time now, slow ball. We've hit that well. Very well, that is excellent. That was excellent. He doesn't age, does he, Owen Farrell? No. No, I spoke to him this week on a Zoom thing, like a video thing. He's shaved his head to look like you and me, but still looks 21. Which you can understand if he wasn't a physical player, but he batters people, doesn't he? Only had two drop goals in this World Cup. Well, Johnny May's been around a while. Doesn't seem like five years ago this. There's a lot of the same faces. Ben Youngs. Johnny May just got in front of his man there, but that is wow. play from Bigger. Comes off the hand of Youngs and falls for Wales again. Flag is up on the far side. Right. That was nice, eh? What a take from Dan Bigger. Oh, unbelievable. Now is going to be critical Dan Bigger in the air. Do you reckon that's something he practices or it's just an attitude? With the big run. Yeah. <laughs> in the same movement, it's fine. And I hundred percent practice, does so much of it, but it's technique as well. It's just he's just got such a good technique. You can see May in the background complaining, but absolutely fine. And Young's being beaten just Very by the good. sheer speed and pace of the take. Big hit from Courtney Laws will be enjoying that. Uh, you and I have got a good stat on Courtney Laws, haven't we? Because he's six foot seven. He's known for being a big hitter. He has not been penalised for a high tackle since his Northampton debut over a decade ago. That is pretty smart. That is a good stat. But it's like some people are better at catching than others as well, aren't they? It's you either yeah. you can either take those low balls, take those high balls, or you drop them. So he's brilliant technique. Him, I know if I was, Liam Williams, Lee Halfpenny. Sorry? You? It's good at chasing them. Here he goes. Over the gain line. No argument with that. No, it was good. Ah, Stripsy. Stripville. Scott Williams does that so much during games. Really targets the ball. Yeah. That's a brilliant piece of cover in play, that. He was flat out catching that figure. Oh. Carnage. Play on! Like it. Ben Youngs. Judge as well. Ah, uh, decent kick. Nice man. Nice composure. That's very nice. From Young's at number nine. I wonder if he's as useful on the farm as his brother. I reckon probably not. No. Delicate little hand. You, you always get like one precious one, one that wants to muck in the team, sort of player in the family. I think he's the he's the prima donna. The yeah, brothers. you can tell a mile off. Look at the hair on it. Wants a story on. Wants. Wants a story read to him at night before bed, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's a tough one because he's obviously Tom Young's got a load of caps, but Ben Young's has got like nearly 100 caps, 100 tests, English tests, and you speak, you're still not the man because your brother could kick your head in. It's a shame, isn't it? You'd never be the man if your brother can have you. That's the point. Oh, that's a decent old chop. That might be a no armour now. I'm Lydia. Ah, as you mate. Got a bit of history, haven't they? 2013. Have they? Got into each other. Yeah, got into each other in that game that England going for the Grand Slam in Millennium Stadium at the time. They're squared up then, but no one's going to throw anything, are they? It's just who's got the better verbals. Yeah, you're safe as houses. You're absolutely safe as houses. That is a no arm tackle. No question. That's a penalty. That's a penalty. Yeah. 
Look at Jerome, are you looking at the angles? Sean Veltzman, the television... <laughs> you can see the right arm sort of trying to come round, but the left arm is down the side. That's NFL, mate. That is yeah. NFL tackle, that. He must have just unbelievably strong shoulders. Yeah. They must just be so stable. Mine would dictate. Go on. Straight on the knee as well. Yeah. He must just have shoulder joints made of steel. I think Dan Liddick's found a new... Um... Hold on. Let's listen to this first. Because you put your arm. Okay, so it's fine. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Because I blew my whistle, scrum attacking team. Okay? <laughs> and now, now, Captain. <laughs> Jouet, Jouet. Um, Dan Big has found a new call in TikTok. Yeah. I'm in charge. We are in charge. Okay, the referee. Heavily into what TikTok at the are? moment. Okay. Right. Keep focus on your game. For a big bloke, really? he can move as well. Yeah, he's got <laughs> hips. Dan Lydia, Dan Lydia, you said. You said bigger then. Oh, did I? I meant Dan Lydia. Sorry, he's got a new call in. Is he doing it? Yeah. Oh, right. I can't bring myself to it yet. There, yeah, let's have a look. Not saying a word. Let's get on with it. Perfect. Ah, not a single lost punch there, isn't it? Not a single punch thrown. That's no, one nil no. to Wales. That's one nil to Wales. Fourth time that Sam Warburton's played here describes this ground. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. His scrums are a mess, boy. They're an absolute mess, fella. It's a formation we've seen before. Three guys tucked in behind the scrum. The Welsh defence will split with Dan Bigger sat in behind the pocket so that he can cover both sides. Just Big strong boy, Tommy Francis. But you can thing is, if the scrum's going down on if the scrum's going down on Joe Marler's side of the scrum. 98 and a half percent of the time it's not him he's so clean he's so legal that you can almost guarantee it won't be him not always but you can almost yeah. guarantee it won't be joe marler strikes me as a really clean type of player like gary lineker mate i really i believe you just in the scrum not so that's a nice scrum I mean, what happened there, okay. you could look at the Welsh and you'd say Joe Marler bored in. So if you went on Spider Cam, you'd say oh, Marler's boring in. I watch that and I think Tommy Thomas Francis is being defensive on the tight end. You can see him turning in now. Marler chases him across. That's 100% the right call. So, so Francis is okay. defensive. He doesn't want to go big and square against Marler, so he tucks in a bit and Marler chases him in. It's good scrummage in that. So forget about Joe Marler's personality outside of scrums when it comes to scrums he is clean as you like yeah yeah okay fine. The, the, pe the people who aren't clean are generally the people who are the, the props who are deficient in some way so joe marler is very happy to scrummage very low with a long bind because he's really flexible really flexible and especially in the shoulders and upper body and the back but he's very very strong so he's happy to scrummage square on so he wants to take you on completely square and the tight heads that dodge that that don't want that they're the ones that cause problems um but joe is is actually about the cleanest scrummager one of the cleanest scrummagers in the world very easy to referee indeed easy three there they are look put the jerseys on happy as larry I never understand why people buy the replica jerseys like the shiny ones. Why do you want to wear that? It hugs, it makes you look like, shows all your fat rolls, makes you look bang out of shape and makes you stink. Just get it's also about one. 70, 80 quid. Yeah, Just get a cotton one from 20 years ago, 30 years ago on eBay. They look cooler as well and they don't like, make you reek. Get in the air and put pressure on this line out throw. Not much to call, really, so far in this game. There's the Lion King throwing in. Got Baldwin. That's good, that's nice. 
No room there. Have you seen Scott Baldwin, the actual video of him getting bitten by a lion? Yeah. It's brilliant. It's like there's a lion in a cage. He's put his hand through the cage and he's trying to ruffle it like it's a little house cat or a Labrador dog, like trying to get it under the, <laughs> under the ears, under the chin. Yeah. What on earth was he doing? Good video, though. Yeah, that's why he plays front row. There's a couple, I remember when it came out and he like put it out there, a couple of other players, I can't remember who, like copied, tweeted the video themselves to try and get all the likes and retweets off it. And it probably worked, but it's like... Oh, that. yeah, that's what Jim Hamilton does now. Oh, no. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. He does. You'll see a funny video on Twitter. And he won't retweet it. He'll steal the video and put it as his own. It's plagiarism, mate. Yeah. Just like he stole a career. So, correct. Some people don't change. 63 caps for Scotland. Three wins. Which is a good hard line run, this. Bang, bang. That's two eye tackles in one. <laughs> That's two eye tackles now, isn't it? And England will be very, very pleased with that defence because I like the game plan that Wales have come to Twickenham with. Lots of picks and goals. Yeah, Jamie steamed in there. They hit him hard. Mate, he gets hit a lot. He gets hit hard a lot. You know, when he first came onto the scene, um, you know, he was a big player in the centre and he made a lot of yards. But as he progressed further, you know, people's tactical technique became a lot better and he takes a lot of big hits. Ball comes to Brown eventually. Always beat somebody, Mike Brown. Always beat somebody. That's just... Wales just didn't fall quick enough, did they? That's way too easy. It's hard to fall quickly like that when you're playing with quick ball. Really well worked try that. No real options. Just exhausted the space. Remember when I was watching that live, I thought, why has he gone blind? No. Youngsy, yes. Excellent decision. Really good play. Yeah, that ball, ball had gone, it might, they might have scored it a phase earlier. But yeah. Mike Brown does well here because that's when it kills it. That's when Scott Williams kills it. But Mike Brown makes another couple of metres, makes Wales retreat. But you need as soon as they retreat, that means someone's not folding, doesn't it? You need someone sprinting around there. I think it's Hallam Amos or it's Gareth Davis just gambles and decides to go left. But yeah. a quick ball there from Mike Brown. Good tan on Faz. It does look good there. He likes his barbecuing. That's why we like that. Rugby yeah. soul, mate. That gone, if that had gone to hand, it would have been a try off first phase. Did well there. Brown did very well there. That was an ugly little ball and he stayed calm. There we are. So far, Mike Brown's having a good game, whether the Welsh yes. like him or not. It's not quite as fast, is it, as the 2003 quarter-final that we watched a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it's nothing like as fast, is it? It's nothing like as fast. It's so much more... It's, well, it's a bit more physical, but yeah, it's it's quite a slow game. Yeah. Like, you could see, that's an easy two, you could see how, you could see why players can grow and just get sort of bigger and bigger mm. because there's no need for them to be quite as aerobically or anaerobically whatever it is fit because they get so much more rest i don't know what the stats say about ball in play i mean there's probably more ball in play now it just mm. feels like set pieces just take so much longer yeah. to form now ben Young's on the restart. Make safe the touch. That's a good win from Wales there. Kick long, force him to kick, bit of pressure. Rob Howley, look, he's worried about lip readers. Giving it this one. That was the NFL. Scott Williams again, another 
stripping defence from a forward. He's so strong. 16-6 at home. Williams, Shouldn't lose that, should you? Really World Cup though, isn't it? Yeah. Pressure. Oh, Nick. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, the penalty went that way. So I thought he penalised England for a second there. No. Yeah, Alan Wynn lost yeah. that. He knew just, that's just frustration there. Oh, he went big. Ah, missed touch. Will be very annoyed about that. They had a chance to turn the screw, given the fact they just scored a try. Hi, still challenging this. Rob Shaw offloads to Watson. That's nice. Wales just can't get into things at the moment. Have such a good attacking game. You see, Andy not getting the platform from which. Big Billy's been quite quiet so far. Yeah, defended quite well. Hasn't carried a huge amount. Yeah. That's a good tackle. That's a good offload. Yeah. Oh, that's good play. The brilliant kick that, isn't it? Yeah, nice really there. good chase as well. But... Very well there, that is a very good exit from there because that was a class kick. Yeah. What an exit that is. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Got four Welsh chasers there. Look at this. Decent chase. Decent chase. Actually, well, wow, that last oh, guy was risky. Yeah, Gareth Davis just needs to keep his channel there. Doesn't we'll expect the, the offload. Yeah. You need to set that now. Oh, he can smile. <laughs> I never knew he had teeth. <laughs> the cows have teeth. Oh, there he goes. That's a big man on the hoof, isn't it? Yeah. Then the run to follow. There's big up. And again. This pass in the centre, Roberts. Good deep. Leaves it to Scott. Very nice deep. Jenkins. The pick up by Big Up. Ooh, was it? Look at him. Oh, Watch him. A little bit juggly, huh? TMO for a knock on he wants. I don't think TMO for a knock No, it's good. It Poorly. Got a point there. Oh, Owen clattered him as well. Look. This isn't a knock on. And floor. I feel like you'd get that get given nine times out of ten, but I still don't actually think that's a knock on. England playing with 16 players so far. Well, because Mike Brown's twice, <laughs> twice the player of anyone else on the pitch. When you get aggressive ruck clearance and the carries are over the game line, he's able to manipulate the defence. Wales get a penalty at the scrum. They needed that. So that's I think he's given that against Marla. No knock on from Bigger. And the fly half was right. It was probably wrong to point out to the referee in the way that he did. Okay. Understand it. the sort of reaction in this type of mm. I think the other side I thought it was the other side actually, but I did think that the penalty's gone the right way. But his side is packed. Have responded in the best possible way. And bigger now can kick into a position where Wales will throw into a line out inside <coughs> the end. It's been a rarity that they've got to be a drive this or a peel. <laughs> Cash and drive or peel, hit your 12 up. Let's hope that that's not crucial for Farrell missing touch. Ah, not that. Courtney's on. A bit of trickery that was. That was a bit of trickery that. Went old school, no lifting. Yeah, Courtney. Yeah, well, that's the 1970s. It's a mall. 
almost no, they're not conning no, no, no. the referee Jerome Gar says but they're just trying to help the decision it's amazing how many complaints the ref has to deal with isn't it crucial turnover another especially when he's referee in Wales yeah it's now three line outs really that it's like it's getting offered a sermon every time he makes a decision painful it's so easy to stamp out it's like diving in football I don't know why everyone puts up with it you stamp it out you stamp it out in a month well if it was that easy and you thought of it then it'd be done but it's not so just give you red cards for it it's really easy never happened mate but he can't hook it so much pressure he can't lift his foot up see he can't get his foot off the ground it's too much pressure scrum ends up going down and they try and just crawl over it got away with it Good ball for Big Billy, though, isn't it? Lovely. Boom. Straight that like kick, fella. Mm. <clears throat> we can't go out. Oh. Wow. That's good. Davis. Jenkins in his fourth world cup. Devin Jenkins. Jamie Roberts. Good D. Mm. Knocked them right back over the green line there, haven't they? You sort of pass the ball back 50 metres. Yeah. To go nowhere. To George North. Hardly seen him. George North. I suppose Wales ultimately. Now, if you're bringing the ball that far back, you've got to be going wide because that's where the space is. If you've taken up the middle there, you're just going to get swamped. Swarmed. Swaddled. Mollycoddled. Hoovered up. Oh. Trying to create the space, Balotau. There's not much of it out there, is there? Davis again. Alan jones Not making much ground. No, nothing. It is very physical, isn't it? There's a lot of large collisions out there. There's not much space, that's why. Yeah. That's all right, though. That's a hell of a kick. Yeah. A hell well, of a kick. not really asking many questions, are they, of the England defence? No. Pretty one-dimensional. There's no real angle change. A lot of direct runners. The knock back rather than knock on from Mike Brown. Good set from from Wales. Good pressure. And this was massively in the period of of Warren Ball still. I think you know the same way, getting over the gain line, trying to exhaust space. Winning ball. Huge in this first 37 minutes for England in defence. Davis winning good line out ball again. There we go. That's nice. Oh, I do like seeing him in a bit of space. Ah, that's a risky pass. That's a poor pass. England contest get the ball. Oh, turnover. The advantage. 15. Runs out for Wales. What's he saying there? Six offside, was it? Was it six? Wow. What a break from Scott Williams. Scott Williams is in fine form this period. It's a shame he's injured at the moment, but work this well. Look at the decoy, Jamie. That's all he needs. There's the hole. Oh, Farrell has gone past Sam Burgess there. To make oh, that Farrell, no. Oh, yeah, is that what happened? I was going to ask you, yeah. Mm. So he's gone behind Burgess. Yeah. He gets flat footed, gets stuck, and this ball. Gareth Davis is quite well covered there. It's a moment that will give Wales great heart. Yeah, that's interesting, that. Their achievements in recent times mean they come into this game with any lack of belief. Yeah, because generally, not always, but 
if there's a defensive error in the midfield and Brad Barrett's playing, there's a very good chance it wasn't him. <laughs> so there you go, they're focusing on Burgess there. Yeah, because he just gets stuck and Farrell has to go behind him. He gets stuck on Jamie Roberts coming short on the yeah. short line. As you would. I mean, that's why, that's why, yeah. that's why people like Roberts, Manu Tuolangi are so dangerous because often they get the ball and you, you've got to keep sort of defensive thinking, haven't you? You've got to have a theme. So you send your big runners up a couple of times, you know, third time then you miss them, but it's trying to fool the defence. Hmm. And that worked. It did then. <clears throat> Here we are. Rafael Nadal. About to serve. And bigger reduces the gap to uh, six points as we approach half time. We've got time for the restart. Game on, boy. That's a good banner. How do you pick that one up? I've got a bit like of sunburn mushroom. on my head, mate. I've got a bit of sunburn on my head. It's sore. I've got to stop shaving it, let it grow back out. <laughs> Dandruff, mate. You should use head and shoulders. I get beer druff. Mo ruff. Mo druff. And scrum pox. Yeah, I've got it all, fella. What is here? Six, six white, six. Davis puts off. And we've had a fascinating first half. We've had a bruising first half. The one try scored by... Only one Game try. On. Is still going to We're all confident. England is still going to win from here. Everything's all right. Tweak a few bits. Tighten it up in midfield. Not a worry. I mean, Wales haven't, didn't fire many shots until then, did they? No. Hardly any. They've been... A lot of up and unders, a little bit of counter attack, but haven't really looked that dangerous until that last phase of play. I'm interested, Shanks, to see what you think when Stuart Lancaster there subs off Sam Burgess. You know, the, the common narrative was he was doing all right and England were doing well till he went off and all that, but we've just seen one defensive mix up in the midfield. When he gets subbed off, I'm keen to see as, a, as an international centre yourself, what you think of his substitution and how he played up to that point. There's only one clear mistake, really, in that first half. Nothing special, but he's done his job. He just gets held on that last set piece from Wales. And I think he's still on now. He comes off in about five or ten minutes, I think. But I think they just get a little bit worried that he's going to be a weakness defensively. Yeah. I mean, one thing we haven't seen is Jamie Roberts smashing through the 10-12 channel, making loads of yards. No, but what we have seen is no him holding Burge and creating space on the outside for Scott Williams. So it has worked yeah. in a different way. Lord Freon. What a player. Just, I mean, he's got a ton of cap, but he's just landed in a golden era for the English locks. I mean, there's just so many locks that he's rarely, but he hasn't been first choice very much. He's such a good player. He's a huge bloke as well, isn't he? Like yeah, naturally he big, naturally thick set. Doesn't have to do much weights to, to get size. Mega mobile, skillful. Talks, talks like a small man, is a big man. Softly spoken man. Here we go, 16-9 England. No way they can lose mm. it from here. At home, home World Cup. We got big Billy, so there you go. Whoa. That was horrible. <laughs> I mean, the thought's going through your head when you're seeing him with a 20 metre run at you. Yours probably be a good call, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know what you need there, I always think, is like a trank gun. Like, <clears throat> if you could just. Or some sort of weapon. Get the old Scott Cornell, get the old metal plate in your arm, your arm support, <laughs> give him one of those. We can't oh. find that. It would have been Big courts. Well, you think he was, he was a top player then, but you think the player he's become now. 
he still makes the tackle, still makes the hit, but his carrying and his offloading game, his driving game, his scrummaging game, he has just become... Got, he's gone from there, from being a top of the range, second row, back row, to now being world class. I think he's just, what an asset. But in both positions as well. Yeah. yeah. Both in second Maybe. row or six, you know. Quality player to have in your squad. It's a good angle. Happy with that? Good enough, Harry? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very good angle break the line every single time you carry the ball especially being direct like that but you've got to get through the first tackle that's what you want do you want that cutting back on the angle make a meter and then get the ball it away doesn't matter if you cut, yeah it doesn't matter if you cut back doesn't matter if you take an outside break but you've got to get through you've got to go for an arm you've got to try and target an arm of the defender because you're going through then you're getting your shoulders through and you can place the ball now, what you don't want to be doing is running at chest because that's where you get held up. It takes a little bit of time then to recycle the ball. Oh, different. Not good different either. Didn't really work that. Mind you, they had the ad, didn't they? Yeah. They had the addy. Oh, the old Lion King there. Two red. Offside. <laughs> the Tiger King. Scott Exotic. Exotic. Sinbad. Oh, high tackle. That's high tackle, that, in anyone's book, mind. And then he's lying on. Can't leave that lying there. Mate, he's, he's let the pride there. down there. He's let the pride down. He's playing with pride, though, isn't he? And that's not his main strength. Oh, he's he's going to get maimed, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to get maimed, yeah. Some stage now, Wales are going to have to go for the juggler, aren't they? Some stage. Yeah, they've got to, you know, stop being tame, haven't they? So, easy three now. You think? It's worth remembering. Easy, easy three, three points, kicking, building a score points of qualification because decision making at penalties is going to become quite important a bit oh, later man. In this game. I can't look at his eyes when he does that it's scary it's demented then he looks like a dementor from Harry Potter he's 35 now game right? over game over yeah that's it now so thanks for joining us everyone uh, brought to you by DHL <laughs> Yeah. And England going to win the World Cup again. If only they could have delivered an England win. 10 points up at home. 35 to go. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that had to go. Oh, oh, Watson was open. And they wouldn't have caught Watson. Scott Williams is quick, but he wouldn't have caught Watson on the hoof. I know Williams was covering, but monster yardage. Mile offside. Tom Francis, three quarters of a mile offside. Oh, that's cheating, that is. The Burgess kick. Happy with that, Tom? Mm. Uh, well, yeah, I am, because it went straight to Liam Williams, but just wasted, isn't it? Panicked. Panic kick. Yeah, it didn't, didn't happen, that, did it? It didn't work. Um, it's not an awful position to be in. I mean, he's not given much away. They're going to get the ball back, you'd imagine. Yeah, but he just relieves pressure, doesn't it? Yeah. A big start by England. Tom Youngs has just made a break. Before that, Owen Farrell's hit three points. That's so good from Liam Williams. Mike Brown was flat out for that. Rapido, good tackle. Yeah. Runs the ball back like now, Matt Perry. Uh, Burgess is getting subbed off any minute now. Um, yeah, the Matt Perry thing, when I played with Matt Perry for years, he was always like, look, I will, when under the high ball, he was just unrivaled and unbelievably brave. But he's like, when I catch the ball and I'm not hit, I will make it back to the halfway line every time. Mm. My job is to get to the halfway line. Your job is to meet me there and not let me get turned over. And you could just, just rely on him every time, every time. 
And normally the rule of thumb is if you can make it to the halfway line, you don't need to kick. You can build then from the halfway line. Yeah. yeah. He was amazing to play with. Oh, okay. So there we are. That's not Burgess. That's who's been done there. Wood. Mm. But Wood did that, yeah. There. They held him in. Of course they did. But that's the game, you know. Mm. There's no way you can get out of there. If you're trying to get out and I pile into you and knock you back in. Good tackle. Look, he's in there. He wants to get out and he's got... He's trying to get out. You can see his legs moving, but he's got... Warburton, uh, Gethin Jenkins, 19 stone straight on top of him, and he's given about half a second. Well, what are you supposed to oh, yeah, do? Sorry. Should have been a penalty to England, should it? Penalty try to England. But both ways, so it goes biased. both ways. So biased. No, I'm not. No, not. It's, uh, it's just, I don't know, I think that's sort of non penalties, though. I do think refs should they do more now, but I think it's just let a ruck take care of itself just for an extra couple of seconds. They often sort themselves out. All right, you solved rucking and you've also solved diving in football. Anything else you want to solve? Can we solve Brexit while we're at it? Well, that's a um, joke, mate. That's a joke. Okay. I don't have to. Okay. I had an idea then. Put you and me in charge, fella. We've been in a few sticky situations ourselves and got out unscathed. <laughs> it's just like being in the special forces, isn't it? Get the job done, get the chopper out. If it had gone now to what the yeah. monster yardage one yeah. on one, Liam Williams. Bigger again. Here we go. Uh -huh. I like it when he sprints in a bit more. Mm. Good tackle that, Lydia, of course. Brad Barrett being very quiet. Yeah, it has, yeah. Half. It's not been a wide game though, really. It's been quite tight. Oh, oh yeah, that's nice. That's a great tackle. That is a great tackle. That's the cardinal sin, mate, of a winger. You had an option there to step back in to keep the ball alive. There's one bloke you want to try and. He's allowed himself to go into touch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One bloke loves colliding. Sam Burgess just loves colliding with people. Slamming Sam, coming in with a big hit on George yeah, North yeah, to force the turnover into touch. Gonna sit again. There he is. He had a lot of time out of rugby uh, because they couldn't work out why Samson Lee was ill, and it was because, really? it, yeah, there was something that in his bloodstream that they couldn't figure out. Eventually, they did because he keeps ferrets and he goes ferreting with them you know catches rabbits he was eating something in the rabbits that was um affecting him are you serious yeah so he had to cut out he had to cut out ferritin one of his passions one of his hobbies yeah, it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> how random is that yeah i've got another bloke like samson ben. samson what what are you eating at home you know, you're getting ill a lot, you're being sick. Are you cooking your chicken properly? Yeah. What else do you eat? Crow. Crow. Sausages. Beef. Yeah. Ra rabbit. What? Rabbit. He's what, from a butcher? No, I just go out with my ferrets. Catch him. Yeah, mix them with toasters or something, guy. Or halitosis, don't know. I got a pest control bloke in called Ben a couple of summers ago because there were rabbits all over my garden. And this might not be the content for now. He used ferrets as well and other things. He got 56 rabbits in one day. And he said, I'll have to come back and do the rest. From your garden? From your garden? Yep. Yep. And he said, if there's 56, I can see, then there's 156. You've got a big garden. 
No, I used to have a really big garden, but I now don't have a big garden. Yeah. All right. It used to be posh, but I'm back with the people now. Here we go. Let's wait for the eyes, yeah? What do you do, mate? Do you make them all into slippers? Well, purses and pillow covers. It stops my hair falling out. Here we go. Easy three. Game over. Easy three. Call it a Doris Day. Prince William not allowed to clap there. Do you see him? Yeah. Internally, he wants to. No, of course he does. Of course he does. Both kickers have been in fine form. <clears throat> what a take. Fantastic. Mm. England quite comfortable, aren't they? Yeah. They won't lose me, mate. Not being put under a lot of pressure so far. Give a few penalties away. Yeah. Oh, good tackle. Very good. Honest Joe. That's what he's known. But I. Wigglesworth coming on. I love Richard Wigglesworth. I thought Ben Young's actually playing quite well. Hmm. Good threat ball in hand. I feel like England may be thinking now we need to just manage this game out. But you got you half an hour to go. A couple of scores in it. Quite. I think I don't know, it felt a bit almost conservative that substitution. Loads of penalties at the breakdown though. Really messy, isn't it? But I suppose it would be when you've got two great back rows competing. Yeah, you've got two back rows who are very keen to get their hands over the ball, haven't you? And Warburton is particularly hard work. Because so just a highly rated player, but probably a bit underrated in some ways at the breakdown because he's just so strong. So destructive. Here we go. <laughs> it's bizarre. Funny, isn't it? Works though. Ah. Lovely job. Qu quality technique. Yeah. Straight ones are the hardest, aren't they? But snooker. Right, boys, seven points in it. Put your bum down. 10, 7, it's 10, 7. England aren't really able to pull away, are they, by more? No. Davis. Dan Lidiot sets it up again. Oh, hey, Dean! Hey, Dean! Well, I was just wanting to play in the okay. right areas. Here we go. Outstanding, Alamein. Oh, that's nice. Good Lord, what you say? It's nice. You've given possession away. Yeah. Look nice to start with. Yeah. Less nice. Good decision from Tom Wood. Not many people outside him. Went back to his England. That's offside. That isn't it? That's just parling. Wigglesworth, Farrell. And not his best and bigger. Farrell trying to make amends. But from the angle, bigger has done well. Took that back in, didn't they? Kicked down the full. Farrell just questioned whether he's taken back in the 22. The officials say no. I'll have you after. after. See you after. Was it pink? In the, in the bike sheds. <laughs> Oh, it's Inspector Clouseau then. I think the kick was the right decision. It just he tries to go for too far distance. I think if he gets that out of the 22, that's good. Wales line out. England can put pressure on him. England will win it for me now. That's a nice line out. 
But you're thinking, well, well, I'm thinking Wales have to do something special now to get themselves back in this game. So you get your, get your mall all nicely set up like that. You've got, you've just got to, it's simple. You've got to keep the ball right at the back so that if things go pear yeah. shaped up front, fall over like they did then, it's rubbish ball, but at least Wigglesworth can whip it out or someone at the back can, Tom Youngs can yeah. make off or with a bit of support or whatever. But as soon as that ball's lost, it's such an easy spoil job for Wales. Here's a Very question wonderful. for you, Dave. Here's a question mm -hmm. for you. You've just defended a driving line out like that. You've gained a turnover. Do you like all the backs coming in and tapping you on the bum, tapping you on the head, saying, well done, mate, well, well done, well done. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Or would you rather just be left alone? Um, no, it was funny because it's nice, but I'm straight away thinking, can you stop doing it? Because it's going to annoy the, strike up the opposition pack for the oncoming scrum. So I'd rather just get quiet. But it is nice to get a little tap on the bum, isn't it? We all like, you know, we are human and we need to be loved. Um, it's nice, but I'd rather they saved it for the 79th or 80th minute when you can't yeah. have the opposition in fuel. Because you've got wingers coming in there from 50 yards just to sort of give you one of them and then off again. I think like, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, I know, but you don't like physical contact, do you? You're a bit weird around... Like, you could play, you could have played with someone for 10 years and never hugged him, couldn't you? I blame my parents, mate. Should have hugged me more. Also, yeah, you're right. But, which is odd because you, you, your mum in particular is very affectionate. But, but you're also very comfortable um, being naked with other guys, aren't you? Like in the shower, you're very comfortable just openly seeing what a guy's about, talking about each other's physiques, aren't you? It's like a home from home, that. Well, it reminds you of school, doesn't it? Right, here we go. So you'll miss this. And England will cruise home. There you go. Quality kick. Brilliant kick. Yeah, I never understood why, um, I never understood why you wore pants in the shower. But no, never understood. But... Um, well, I, no, I was always off swimming afterwards. It's a very good place kicking today. Yeah, very nice. Right, boy. Twitch getting twitchy now. There That's we go. Really, there we go. Really nice exit. Very well done. Very well indeed. That's straight up to the halfway line. This is great stuff. Mm. This is great stuff. See, that's not what you wanted from that phase. Just made it a little bit easy for England to knock 10 yards out of you. you that's stuff. okay. That's okay. Yeah. A lot of pressure on the England line out now. What a break, though, from George North there. Haven't seen much of him in that first half, but it shows you, mate, like how dangerous he is. Like, you know, he gets, he does get a bit of stick now and again for not having massive involvements in games, but when he does, often they lead to big breaks and tries. He's a weapon. And Wales have just done what England did at the first half to them. You know, broke off the kickoff down the blind side. Yeah. Look at the power. Very good. Three tackles he's gone through there. We're drinking of this option at the end. Adam Amos. Yeah. I think it's the right option. I think, you know, the way Wales are playing at the moment, you know, they're, they're playing for penalties more so than actually look like scoring a try. So put a bit of pressure on. They've got to get up here, though. 
That's a nice little dummy at the front. It well the ball. Yeah. Bradley Davis with me. It's not like it's not great ball, but they haven't turtled it. They haven't turned it over. Look at Alan Wynne Jones. Absolute north. Love it. So now you're 60 minutes. It feels like momentum's changed a bit. It's very, very twitchy. And England are thinking you got to make some changes. Burgess is still on. Yeah, well, they've gone from 10 points to 7 points to 10 points to 7. Now it's 4. So yeah. Wales slowly claw themselves back in through penalties. I mean, the two instances really, one was a Scott Williams break just before half time. And that break from George North and Liam Williams has really troubled England's defence. You know, Wales have been surviving off breakdown penalties and Dan Bigger's boot. Yeah. Just a little bit of treatment. Big legs, those. Mad. And a lovely Huge. big bum. They're big considering they move quick. Not like Celesi Finau quick, who had freakish legs and moved very, very quickly, but he's still got a bit of footwork, mm. Billy, and a lot of explosive yeah. power in there. And well dealt with in this game, though. Very well dealt with it. I mean, it helps having Dan Lydia. It really does. <laughs> also, you think you've got Scott Williams and Jamie Roberts in midfield, and there's no, you know, they're not worried about the physicality of those two, but you've also got Dan Bigger at 10, and he will, he'll whack any, he's a bit like Owen Farrell, he's very, very committed physically, so there's not a lot of areas in that Welsh team where you think big men are going to make inroads, you've got to create space, because power just won't do it. Because, you know, I'd say, I, I'd say, you'd say Billy Vrunapo would be a lot more powerful than Dan Lydiot, but it doesn't matter. If Dan Lydiot's there to just knock him over from below the knees and it works repeatedly, you know, so he doesn't need to be more powerful than Billy, does he? He just needs to knock him over when he's got the ball. But to be able to create space as well, you need clean ball off set piece, you know, it needs to be good quality off the line out, good quality off the scrum. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's slow ball, you know, it's difficult to create space when there's plenty of, and too many defenders in front of you. You need to be able to isolate defenders. There needs to be a gap between them. So this is why set piece, I think, is is so good to attack from. That'll do. That's a quality ball over the top there. I don't know who gives it. It might have been Scott Williams, but he gets hammered after it. Yeah, he's battling now. Mm. Here we go. Falatau's pace there. Yeah, I know. Amazing. You know, there's no way Watson was going around the outside of him then. He had a bit of an angle, but he tracked all the way back then as well. Yeah. He's still battling, isn't he, Scott Williams? Yeah. Proper club. England again, he'll discipline. Didn't need to. Watson felt he had the pace here. But it was Amos getting back. And Watson is so fast. Mm. Oh. Ah, oh, the penalty machine is on. <laughs> Number one, the machine is on. We got properly hammered. Did you see who got him as he yeah. threw that pass? No. Who was it? I didn't. I, see Bird, don't know. I don't know. It was quite wide, so I'm guessing either. Barrett or Barrett. Burgess. There he is. First love, horse riding. Second love, rugby. True story? Yeah. Used to ride horses. Before he was a rugby player. Show jumping. Yeah, I know. Ah! On what? 
A shire horse. Jim Carner. Jim Carner, I don't know. Didn't look like a jockey to me, fella. But I'll take your word for it. Here he goes. Throws the pass. Right, bigger through the pass. Oh, no, it's Scott Williams. Here we go. Barrett. Cool. Oh, it's his knee, isn't it? Yeah. Right knee. It's his right knee anyway. It's his knee. It's not dirty. Not at all. Just, all, just gets Painful. in an awkward position. Mm. Painful. 48 metres from four carries. Decent. Of course, there was one lovely breakthrough around the outside, wasn't there? Yeah. Which will help his averages. I always think it's weird when, when you look at that situation there because you've got Alan Wynn Jones and Sam Warburton, two quality players. Up. You know, Alan Wynn is now captain Wales for a long time. You just sort of you forget, well, I forget that Sam Warburton was captain during this this period because you know Alan Wynn's done such a, a big job. Yeah. It's great though to have experience like that, mind. You're just thinking it's unlucky, and that subconsciously. Have quite good fun driving that, wouldn't you? I'd love it. A job for us. Yeah, it would be hurt, but I would love to drive that. It'd be quite funny to just like if one of the lads is. A couple of the players are quite funny lads. It'd be quite funny to just like pretend to run them over, wouldn't it, on the way off? Ooh, ooh. Just stop and start like this. Yeah, I'm so so. I thought Burgess right. went off a lot earlier than this. Flats. I don't remember him yeah, being on this there. long. Mm. Yeah, he's still there. And England are still winning. Yeah. Benefit Wales, another attacking threat they have. I mean, they're walking from here. What a kick! Wow. Dan, great kick. I love that guy. I wish he wouldn't complain so much to refs, but otherwise, I love that guy. He's just good to watch. He's not flair. He's just commitment, isn't he? Oh, naughty, very naughty. Burgess, good tackle. Good line from Jamie Roberts. Burgess got him. Mm. A really good line. Amos. It's a knock on. I thought he might have given a penalty. Super move from Wales. Supercharged Fallot out here. What a strong second half. The Welsh number eight having Roberts White. Lovely pass. Ah. Who knew he could pass? I know. That is a left handed miss pass from Jamie Roberts. He's fumbled it. He fumbled it out wide there. Um, you could see Liam Williams there trying to get the ball in his outside arm to offload. Yeah, and just gets tackled. It's good depth. Very good ball. Lovely. That. Gets Brad Barrett made that tackle. Tackles the ball. Farrell, Farrell. 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 Tackle. Can you see? Tackle that. He's trying to get that ball in that outside arm to draw in May and let out the cap flap. He's so good at that. But great oh, tackle. Farrell, that ball as well. Very, very good. The distance Farrell had to cover as well to make that tackle on the touchline. A lot yeah. of ground to cover. Ross Hampton Lee struggling as he came on, really struggling. Getting hammered. Take the pen, wouldn't you? Has to be the penalty now. Yeah. Goodness me. England needed that. Take a nice little touch grinder. Yeah, it's one of those, that was one of the substitutions where I thought, well, Francis is actually doing okay. I mean, once or twice he struggled a bit, but you think, well, if you're going to take him off, who are you going to replace him with? You want someone stronger at set piece, and I'm not I'm not convinced hmm. Samson Lee was that guy. I mean, he's not, obviously, on, with hindsight, he's not, but I was never quite convinced he was that guy. Um, and it's put Wales, at, I mean, ultimately it works out all right, doesn't it? But it's put Wales at a bit of disadvantage, I think. It looked like a pre-arranged sub. I never quite like those. 
Unless it's me coming off the bench and I know I'm definitely getting on. That's a good idea. Well, it's less you, unless it's you coming off on 40 minutes. You're happy with that. Put your feet up then. Oh, yeah, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Good line out. See, nicely set up. Ball at the back. You've got to do something with it now, mind. But at least the ball's safe. Lovely. Lovely. Ah. This is brilliant play. Oh, that's excellent from George North. Still got it. <gasps> oh, what a handoff. See that? Yeah. God, that got excited then. Look at the boys on the floor. Yeah. His shoulder. Mike Brown being nice, taking care of him. That's a good offload. Another good Very one. Very good. Right decision to hang on to that. That was just that was the killer, wasn't it? Yeah. Was North Even so though. Well. Look at that from Mako. That's quality. That's the one that shouldn't have gone. Ooh, gets a knee to the head there, Liam Williams. Hallam Amos dislocates his shoulder, trying to hand off Owen Farrell. But another person off. Could be two, in fact, for Wales. This is catastrophic. Rob Webber's on. Just recently retired. Amos down. Oh, he looks in some pain. Oh, it doesn't look good. It was a knock to the head. Let's have a look at this. What a handoff that was, but he dislocated his shoulder. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's horrible, that is. Hell of a handle, but oh. There's going to be nobody left. It's it's unbelievable. It's unprecedented. Watch the knee here. I think it's Tom Wood. Oh. That's your kick in the air, wasn't it? I mean completely accidental, but he was trying to fly mm. hack the ball. And England have had two opportunities, big opportunities. Young's is break, Wigglesworth's break. Panicking. Really Calm outside. Inside. Losing two backs. Wales, but I think it's by the courage of their defence. Bodies on the line by Wales. They've kept England out this half, and they're the ones that have taken their chances in the second period. Imagine the uh, the conversations now between coaches and medics. He's got to stay on. He's got to stay on. Can he stay on? Can he stay on? He, stay on? he needs to turn to dig in. Yeah, his arm's hanging off. It's He's coming off. It's okay. Can we get it back in? Can we put a bit of duct tape on it? You know, one week injuries. These are rugby World Cup ending injuries. Burgess still on. 66 gone. When a player walks about off on his arm like that, you, you know so it's bad. So much the conversation about Sam Burgess, but it's quite interesting to watch, isn't it? Um, yeah, poor bloke. Absolutely ridiculous. Lloyd Williams scrum half to come on. Is it wing full back? So you've got a scrum half going on the wing. Yeah. And Reese Priestland will come on. On the on the bench who will at full back. God, it looks horrible, doesn't it? Mm. You see someone off going like that. Only just back from so is you. That long -term foot injury. Then he got a bang on the leg last week against Uruguay. Horrible for a scrum half to come on though in any other position because if you're like a if you're a ten or a twelve, you know, often you find yourself in different positions in that back line. You know, you find yourself on the wing, you find yourself at fifteen covering. A scrum half, literally every ruck they're there passing the ball. So 
they have no real concept of really how to how to defend and how to play different positions. Mm. I mean, this is the worst position ever to defend. Let alone when you just have to make two changes. Back into the match. Having the better of the second half, really, but England now know, given the Welsh predicament, men out of position. They have to be ruthless here. I wonder if England should have kept the ball in that scrum. They were motoring then. Look all right to me. Yeah. Then it's Rob Webber who's come on at hooker for Tom Youngs. Wigglesworth to Haskell. Is he giving a penalty away? Oh, no, he hasn't, for a change. Patience needed by England here. How's that not a penalty from charging in from the side, that? Never through the game. Did look a little bit from the side. He's running from the changing rooms. Ooh. Tight stuff, isn't it? And Wigglesworth miss kicks that and it nearly as Andy Gomez all said it nearly goes straight into Anthony Watson's hands it would have been a try give a penalty away getting Jenkins making that decision it was in at the side yeah that's your, yeah exactly so that's your easy three that penalty away. That take you out of the seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think I think that's a rush of blood rather than a calculated give up three points rather than seven. He doesn't want to go seven behind now. I don't know. Here we go, here comes the sub. Not... George Ford about to come on then for I mean, the thinking behind this is that you've got two kickers there in that back where you've got three, including Wigglesworth, just uh, clear lines to play territory. But the difference is England are winning. Three more points for England's boot. You know, you've got George North, Anno and Farrell now to kick the corners play territory a big to close a game out for 10 minutes do you reckon that's the thinking behind the stub I mean you didn't do it wrong did you? they don't need to score any tries they don't need to chase the game but I'd say they've taken off such a good defensive player and put on a gifted attacking player I know he's a good tactical kicker as well but I feel like you, if you want to Defend the lead. Yeah. Burgess has defended really well. It always scares me when coaches make big calls like this when they're winning. And it's, and it's a tight game as well. You know, if you're chasing yeah. the game, you can see the reason why. It's easy to say yeah. now. And at the time, it was a bit like, I suppose George Ford got to come on because he's so good. But at the same point, you think... But I, I was quite glad at the time because it gives you a clear target to attack. You know, the first option... You know, the Welsh team here should be attack George Ford, Jamie Roberts or George North at George Ford. Yeah. And what we haven't seen, Jamie Roberts has played really nicely, but we saw one lovely line off the back of a line out that Burgess covered. I mean, Roberts made a couple of meet, few metres, but Burgess covered him. But we haven't mm. seen those smashing lines through that 10, 10 12 channel. He's been covered, nicely covered there as well. He went for him, though. Yeah. Tackling his man. That's a good pick up from Warburton. Though. Ten minutes left. Wales still within range. And if they get level from here, let alone win the game, what character, what an effort that would represent. Good hands there. Oh, very to find good. North. Then it's Cuthbert. They simply can't afford any more injuries. There's nobody left. Was oh, steaming up then, Faz, wasn't he? Hmm. Wales have just suffered as well in attack with just two slow. Here we go. Good play right there. Jamie Roberts draws the man. 
And away goes Lloyd Williams, out of position, the scrum half on the wing, and here's Gareth Davis. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. What a try. How well does Lloyd Williams do on the left wing there? He's left footed, which obviously helps. It's a quality kick in field as well, and support line from Garth Davis. But watch Richard Wigglesworth here as well. Panics. Doesn't see Garth Davis coming. Lloyd Williams, the makeshift winger. Kick the ball inside. Was it offside? Totally Miles onside. It's a beautiful kick. Well, not Miles. Two meters. That is such a good kick. A brilliant kick. Gareth Look at the pressure he's under from Johnny May. Two, three, possibly four meters behind the man. Good ball. Who kicks the ball? That man. Anthony Watson. Pardon me. Vision. Yeah. What execution? And then it still needs that is a pick up. Great try. How many times have you seen them being fumbled under pressure, off your toes? And you can hear Gummer saying that's what you get when you put two scrum halves on the field. Leave it out, Gummer. Second so Gummer would have done that. He maybe would have done that. He's pretty classy. That's what you get when you put a left-footed player on the left wing. Yes. Wow. There's, what, there's one ball here. Davis. here it is. Well, well, the ball. The Bigger. How do they get? How do they get outside Barrett so easily there though? Is that a defensive error or is that just good attack? A bit of both really. It's a really good ball from Dan Bigger. Throws the miss pass in. And it's flat and it's fast as well, so it doesn't give any um, time for the England defence to recover. Very good carry that. He's just so athletic, Valatau, isn't he? And Jamie Roberts knows that ball has to go a long way downfield there. Four puts it back, and Priestland takes. Those two will be fighting. The tackle from Pascal there. When all this ends at Bath, but they have no thought for that at the moment. Oh, what a hit. Oh. Oh. Stay. And bigger. Again, putting it back on England. Under Big nudge. Now, all level. You can see that how tense it is. Ford, two, no three, English player anywhere near that. It's Wales with the courage to run. Different mindset now as well for England. You know, they've led for, I think, nearly all of this game. Now, all of a sudden, 25 all. A little bit of panic, yeah. You know, 10 points up. Half time. Yeah, and the kick's a bit big about all the chasing we've given up because that's too easy a take. They now have a penalty. Wales just inside the England half. Wow. Declan Jenkins all over the ball. Class. Yeah. 73 minutes in. 120 kilos still doing that. So good at Jacqueline. Thing is, thing is with Gethin Jenkins, what I like about that Jackal is compare that with the Cole one in the first half. He is on the ball yeah. going for the ball, not just in position trying to get a penalty, milk a penalty from the ref. He wants to nick it and play. He's supporting his own weight. Yeah. Getting this team over the game line. at eight is starting to have an impact. What a comeback. Actually amazing. Getting the ascendancy on England and bigger just hasn't looked like missing. Big kick. He's got the Neil Jenkins distance as well. Seven from seven, an incredible display. He has kicked very nicely, isn't he? <laughs> and their tactics. Has he got the half penny distance here? Yes. He's certainly got the adrenaline. Absolutely. So he really gets it. This is going over. He'll never have a better moment to have more adrenaline in the body. Bigger. It's there. Wow. <laughs> it's so impressive, isn't it? What he delivered. I forget what a great game he had. I forget what yeah. a great game he had. Now everyone will remember it in Wales for 
the Gareth Davis try and the Lloyd Williams kick through. But how cool has Dan Bigger been? Mistake free. Nearly all of the game. What could England do to spark a response? Now the question here. Do Wales try and just close it out or keep playing? You sense they were just... You can't close it out for five minutes, can you really? Pick and go in. No. Not when the opposition have got Ford, Watson, May. You can't do it. You've got to go. So this is definitely Chillville. Make a bit of ground. Mm. Anywhere just over the halfway line would be good for England. Livid, Cuthley. Good kick. The damn bigger that's steaming for everyone. It has to be man of the match. Yeah. Yeah, by mile. What response have England got dominating the game for not so many minutes in so many meters made? Fascinating. Dominating. What can they do? Weather throws. Ropey line at that. Defensively though, you've really got to be squeaky clean here. No Just penalties. No to make sure you're on side. No high tackles. You leave the ball alone. You don't kill it. You're guessing Jenkins then pulled straight out of that jackal. Yeah. It wasn't there. It wasn't. No. Nope. So he left it. He left it. No Welsh players in that ruck. Released straight off it, look. Great tackle. Who that charter is. Brilliant tackle. Yeah. Ford. Brown. What a game. That's a good carry from Brown. Lydia trying to rip himself out of there, you see. Mm. What'd you do, mate? Go for post or go for the corner? Well. Same with Roberts. Definitely the what corner. Would you do? Oh, I I hundred percent I'm super conservative. Um I hundred percent when you've got a great kicker. And you've got a bit of time left on the clock. Take points, don't lose. I mean, but you cannot, you know, go for the corner and win it. You're a hero. But I think uh, you don't need to win the game. You don't need to win it. You know, you need to not lose it. And there is a difference. Right call from Gar says if you tackle the man, even if you're supporting, you have to show. I mean, this is it. It's positive. It's defined. Stuart Lancaster's management of the England team. That was it, that decision there. We're going for it, let's have them, you know, and it's very confrontational, really positive, ultimately proven, catastrophically unwise. That's massive. I mean, that's enormous. It's the first time they've gone to the front. You go to the front because it's the easiest ball to take, but that is the danger. Getting driven straight it's into touch. Yeah, it's the easiest ball to defend by a mile. You load it up, absolutely load it up. And especially near your own line where weirdly there's more adrenaline than normal. It's so easy to defend. Look, Lift has taken out, Samson Lee takes out Mako. It's, they take them out easily. That is not a difficult defensive drill. If you're in training and someone defends you that easily, you'll get a rollicking from your coach. That's way too easily defended. Lifters split, jumper piled back, I think by Charteris. Excellent defence, poor, poor drill from England. Still though, not Wales not really clear their lines that well. Got 10 metres on a kick. So another chance. Line out has been fantastic for 70 minutes, and when the pressure comes on and it's crucial, you need how to can you be a coach right yet stay so calm? Oh, he's, he's not, he's not. Oh, I got oh, Wales have just Wales have just done brilliantly in this last minute and a half. You can say it's easy well, to defend all you want, you can do it. Charged down by 
from 10 minutes you can just see a clear change in like the body language the tempo yeah. that Wales are bringing to the game it's just momentum point, as, as, a, as a prop at this point a loose head prop I'm thinking right Samson Lee has been struggling when that ball comes in everyone all anyone thinks about in the England pack is Samson Lee and everyone goes towards him and everyone puts all their weight Samson Lee's neck all you do and you can blitz this scrum and walk over it and win yourself a penalty. So Kieran Brooks is up, they're all up for it, but you've got to target. The whole front row has got to almost set just a couple of inches, a couple of degrees across. And Weber and Mako in particular have got to target Samson Lee. And we've got to rip into him. Don't let him get in a nice position, because when he's in a nice position, he's really strong. This has got to be a snappy little engage now. And it wasn't. Samson Lee's in a good position. He might not hold. At least all he needs to do is hold for long enough. It wasn't explosive enough. It is seconds now. Wales can count it down. David yeah, it's difficult though, Flats. One scrum to... Of course it is. And also, he's thinking all I've got to do is hold firm. Good on him. Good yep. job. Get the ball down channel one. That's huge. Just, he was Massive just win, who's in? Yeah, but losing Liam Williams, losing Hallam Amos, you know, having to rejig the whole of the back line. You rarely see emotion from him, mate. Warren Gatlin. That's yeah. probably the most emotion I've ever seen on him. You know, in front of the camera. Played well, Jamie did. A couple of nice passes yeah, in that game. Took the ball up really well, but... Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke about it at the start, we spoke about it in the middle. The defining moment was Sam Burgess going off. Whether or not that would have made a difference or not, who knows, but it changed the game. It was just, um, it's just it was just fascinating to watch Wales at no point look um, worried about not being in front or being out of touch. They just at no point no. worried. And I think a lot, a lot of that is to do with the guy they got in the team and the fact that you can relax when you've got such good operators like Lydia I thought was fantastic undercover getting was brilliant but Jamie Roberts was excellent but when you got Dan Bigger in your team I think he yeah. what the time has taken it to the next level in terms of competition for Ofti I think he relaxes you at the same time you know no one is no one's worried as long as you got Bigger you got a chance when he's on that sort of form and I thought he was just fantastic he went for the spiral as well there did you see didn't bother end over end. he went for a spiral yeah his boot kept Wales his boot kept Wales in the game all the way through that and they didn't really have many try scoring opportunities maybe two or three they took one and that was enough look at that yeah I love seeing that from coaches it's great isn't it yeah I love it too Oh, that was a bloke from Stereophonics in there as well. He loves it. No, it's a great occasion. Now. Sorry, though, that's England, England have lost, but you've still got a chance to qualify. You've got Australia yeah, exactly. last pool game up, so yeah, exactly. it'll be fine, mate. I won't worry about it too much. Yeah, it'll be fine. It's Home World Cup as well, isn't it? So the rest of sort of out. Um, no, it's great. I actually, although, you know, you owe England to win some English, I thought it was a brilliant game, that. Really enjoyed it. Nothing yeah. like the one. I mean, sorry. Three no. It started off a bit slow, didn't it, with an arm wrestle? Oh, wow, what an unbelievable result. I mean, I, I mean, amazing test match for a World Cup. I, think two very I actually think, I think it was an amazing test match, but I do think 2003, I don't care who wins or loses, probably better to watch because it was a bit less physical, a bit, it was a bit more about long rallies, more, more than it was about serving volley, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You know, this was far tighter game. You know, came alive in the last quarter of the game, you know, where... The pressure got to both teams, but huge decision as well by Rob Shaw. Mm. He would say it's career defining when he got a lot more caps after that, and won things and won grand slams and all sorts of stuff. And you know, no, it was it was career defining because Stuart Lancaster ends up being his last, you know, period in charge of England. Rob Shaw loses yeah. the captaincy. Yeah. One one decision. I mean, mm. and hindsight so easy. I mean, you just you, you go with it, don't you? You go with the momentum. You go with the kill. You know, a, a penalty would have drawn the game. 
they were mm. happy they want to go for the win there wouldn't have been time really for for anything else to happen if england were to come back and win that game they would have had to do it from their own line with a minute to go yeah it is one of those days where you rush down to the pitch and says who wants to interview me yeah fantastic Gatland is down there now absolutely fantastic well done Wales. game over warren you were punching the air on the final whistle just, just see me in the crowd Tough place to come and win. point clap wave what he's doing We've been here before, but I think 2008 we were behind and we dug deep, we had a good second half and we just stayed in the match. So, you know, He's emotional, you can tell by the tone of his voice. A lot of respect for, for England in terms of, you know, definitely the players and management, so that game could have gone in any way and we're, we're the ones who are pretty happy. How heroic was that performance from Dan Bigger? Yeah, well, he kept us in the game, didn't he? I mean, two excellent... Uh, kicking displays by both teams and we were debating a few minutes to go did England take the shot at goal they went for the corner and you know could have easily ended up a draw as well because uh, you know both both kickers were excellent but uh, in the second half we got a bit more hands on the balls played in the wider channels which we talked about at, at half time and and uh, you know got, on, got on outside them a little bit so um, yeah really pleased with the performance. It's come at a cost, though, some significant injuries this evening. Mm. How big a concern is that, a rice mark? Yeah, we lost another couple of players today. I think it looks like Scott Williams. Uh, Helen Mayne was dislocated his shoulder. Uh, they're running out of players in Wales, so... Uh, but great, you know, great carry. We put Pick Williams me. on the wing. Great. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that does for the fella. Um, Gareth Davies. And, look, they just dug deep. These players have worked so hard. And like, so we've got such a limited I can't remember what Scott Williams' injury was from, after the game. It looked like knee, didn't it? Uh, I can't remember if he so yeah. so backed up the next week or he was hurt no. or whatever. But no. Pretty sure Tyler yeah. Morgan comes in. Clearly an emotional Warren Gatlin there, and why not? And was drained by the experience. He complimented his man of the match, Dan Bigger. He was absolutely immense. Sonia again. Have you been taking kicking lessons from Lee Halfpenny? <laughs> Look, it's, um, it's, it's just a huge, huge effort. I mean, for us to come here in England's home ground, World Cup, no one gave us a hope. Uh, a million and one injuries. Uh, it's not about me here today. I, I, I feel a little bit cheated taking man of the match because this was a huge, huge squad, team, management effort, and um, this will be certainly shared with all the boys today. At 10 points down just after the break, did you still believe then that you could do this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this team how many late wins we've had over the years and um, we always seem to make things difficult on ourselves we gave so many penalties away um, but yeah you know we, we kept believing we kept sticking to the structure and uh, yeah this is this is the best day rugby wise of, of probably of all of our careers what were the emotions as Gareth Davis went over and you knew you'd had a, a simple conversion and it could well win you the game that, yeah that was the relief the simple conversion I didn't fancy it from the touchline I'm sure they were that um, no, look, it was just, we kept going. We played some good rugby on times. I think both teams played some decent rugby and um, what a spectacle. I mean, this is coming out to that uh, before the before kickoff was truly special and something, which will, you know, they've tricked them, have done it amazing. And um, yeah, just, just hopefully we can push on on Thursday now. Well done. Thank you. A million and one injuries, says Dan Bigger. I think if Wales go on to win the World Cup, that's what they might as well call the book. A million and one injuries. Unbelievably brave second half performance. And what a try at the end with the standing winger Lloyd Williams finding Gareth Davis underneath the post. What about an England reaction? We should hear from the head coach, Stuart Lancaster. Stuart, was it right to go to the corner at the death there, not kick the penalty to potentially draw the match? I don't think games are win or loss on big moments, but that was certainly a big moment, wasn't it? And, uh, you know, we've got to look at the decision making, um, but more importantly, we've got to look at the discipline. I mean, you know, Wales stayed in the game through penalties and, uh, and also they snuck a win. And, uh, you know, obviously we're absolutely gutted in the change room. You led 10 points after the break. How did you lose that match? Well, as I said, you know, uh, giving away penalties and, and Dunbig's a world class goal kicker and he kept banging him over and suddenly they're back in the game. They get a break down the edge and, uh, and so it's 25 all. And uh, well, you know the rest. How damaging to your World Cup hopes is this? Well, it's not great, is it? I mean, well, I've sent the players inside. I mean, Wales are going to play Fiji in four days' time. 
we've got to play Australia, Wales have got to play Australia, so there's a lot can happen, uh, but it's a massive game for us now next Saturday, without a doubt. Are you concerned at the pressure that's going to come on you and your squad? Oh, the pressure's on everyone, isn't it? It's the World Cup and we've just lost a game against Wales, so it's a, it's a must-win game next week, no doubt. Hard line. So let's check out the Thanks everybody then for joining us uh, for a match that will be long remembered for that decision. Of course, there was more to it than that one decision, uh, mainly Dan Bigger playing for Wales. Hope you enjoyed it. We really did. Thanks to DHL for delivering this match for us. See you again. Goodbye. 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 I want to say the last word. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks very much.